Hi students, uh, today I want to introduce for you the concept of a buffer in sequential logic. So in the last video we looked at this simple two-level combinational circuit where we had A and B or together and that result was then anded with C. So then um, we saw how because of the gate delay of the OR that this um, output from the OR is not ready until 10 nanoseconds after we have a valid input for A and B. So one thing that we can do is um, we can kind of stall C a little bit while A and B are going through this OR. And one way we can do that is we can store it into a buffer. So the symbol for a buffer, it just looks like a triangle here. It's like an inverter but without the bubble. And one way that we can implement this is we can actually just use back-to-back -back inverters. So if we have an inverter here, we have some input, then that gets inverted to A0, and then we invert it again, and we have A0, which is just plain A. And um, if we want to ensure that this doesn't change, so we want to um, make this stable, to make the buffer stable. So in other words, um, don't allow it to change. We can hook it up in a feedback loop. So it looks like this. We tie the output to the input. Um, and this actually constitutes a very simple memory device. Um, and the question now is, um, how can we create a memory device that can store either a zero or a one? So in a buffer like this, um, it's hard for this to change because it's stable. So whatever is on it is just gonna stay on it because we have this feedback loop. Um, and so after this, we're gonna talk about latches. And um, a latch is a better memory device than a buffer, um, although this is the simplest memory device in, in sequential logic. So um, in the next video, I'll introduce some common latches, the SR latch, the D latch, and the gate or enable latch. And uh, let me know if you have any questions.